Today we will be explaining the dynamics of a bungee jumper using a two-phase method. The first phase can be modeled by using kinematics of a free-falling body and the second phase modeled by a quasi-linear model. We will denote the unstretched length of the cord as L and the displacement of the jumper as X. First we will analyze the free-fall portion of the jump. This phase first occurs when the jumper leaps and the rope has not yet reached its unstretched length. Here is the free-body diagram for the jumper. The forces acting on the jumper are gravity in the downward direction and air resistance in the upward direction. It is normally assumed for simplification that air resistance is the primary source of damping during a bungee jumper's oscillations, although there are many other contributing factors. It is important to note that this is different from bilinear mass spring systems because a bungee cord can only provide a force and tension and not during the freefall portion when x is less than l. Once the jumper has a displacement greater than L, an upward force of tension is introduced. As the jumper falls further and the cord becomes stretched beyond its initial length, the force of tension increases. The force increases linearly and is modeled by the equation F equals negative K times X minus L, where X minus L is the amount of stretch in the cable. At this point, the motion of the jumper can be modeled as quasi-linear. Here is the free body diagram, including the tension force you will notice the air resistance is still present as before. After the amplitude of the oscillations in phase two decreases to the point that the jumper will no longer rebound to a displacement of L, the motion can be modeled exclusively by an equation including tension. This continues until the oscillations become negligible at steady state. In an ideal world where damping is not present, the bungee jumper would continue to oscillate, alternating between phase one and phase two indefinitely. Here are the graphs of displacement versus time for a jump with and without damping present. We will now derive the equations of a bungee jumper's motion. Here again is the free body diagram for the free fall portion. From this, it is easy to deduce the equation of motion, mx double dot plus cx dot equals mg. Here, m is the mass of the jumper, c is the damping coefficient, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and x is the displacement of the jumper from the initial position. Now for phase two, which has an equation of motion similar to a spring mass damper system. Here again is the free body diagram for this phase. The equation of motion can be derived from this to be mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equals mg plus kl. Notice that the difference between the free fall motion and the quasi linear motion is the addition of a k times x minus l term. It is important to remember that the jumper will switch back to phase one once the displacement becomes less than L. We have modeled a bungee jump with a ball of clay as a point mass and an elastic cord. The wall is labeled in inches to show displacement. The length of the cord is 28 inches. You will notice that free fall occurs until the point mass reaches this displacement marker and then the cord begins to stretch. Right before reaching the static equilibrium point, which occurs at 48 inches, the ball begins to slow down until reaching a maximum displacement of 71 inches. The ball then rebounds upwards until again passing the unstretched length of the cord and returns to free fall. This only occurs once. After the cord begins to stretch again, the point mass becomes an under-damped oscillator around the 48-inch equilibrium position until the ball is essentially at rest. Thank you for watching our analysis of a bungee jumper.